Ooh. All right, so this one's gonna be a quick build. I have this beautiful piece of sapele here. Ooh, African mahogany, very nice. And I say quick, cause it'll be quick on your end. Probably take me a while on my end. So let's jump into it. Look how sad that dust collector looks in the background. It's all, <laughs> Anyways, I got my uh, strips cut. And now it's time to move on to the drum sander. And to sand these takes a little special trick because, well, drum sanders have some particularities about thin work pieces. There is a short on that. Uh, if you check out and subscribe to my channel here, you can check out the short on sanding thin strips. My material is sanded, sequenced, and ready for the steamer. The steamer is going, it's currently heating up, and I'm gonna let that thing get nice and hot. So I won't have any problems with the actual bend. That'll take about 20 minutes, 25 minutes in the steam box. And then I'm gonna head over here while that's happening to the bandsaw and I'm gonna cut out the handle. Look at that cool thing, right? Yeah. The handle is based off a template I just made and then I will cut it out to that, take it to the sander, rock and roll. While this beauty is setting up in its form, I wanna give you a couple resources that I think will really help you if you're looking to build your own net. Uh, basically, go on to Instagram, look up Raging River Nets. Uh, he's an incredibly helpful, amazing artist, and just phenomenal person to chat with on there. Uh, huge, huge follow for him. Uh, also, there's No Leaf Clover Company, and he was a great resource and phenomenal person, amazing skills at both knife making and net building. So check that out as well. Good places to follow and be inspired and also share their work and get them some sales because they're awesome. I used Type On 3 for this net glue up and that's kind of a hot mess, but the end result is a nice waterproof glue. So good option. And once I remove it from the form, it's off to the drum sander for a couple quick passes. And then I do some final shaping, which all the edges are done by hand. Fishy is looking really good. The fit is perfect. And now it's time to get some clear resin in there. So I'm gonna start with about a quarter inch total of total boat clear resin. So let's get this base one in there. I'm gonna set this in with some super glue and let's start pouring some resin. As you can see, I have built a dam around this thing actually out of hot glue because on the last net that I did like this, I learned that you can actually let that overflow instead of trying just to top it off. Why not you know, let it overflow a little bit? You'll be able to take it down. So I'm allowing for that to happen. Right now I'm laying out and drilling for the net basket. And sadly, I don't have the sanding footage. So I'm gonna save you two minutes of sanding time and know that I actually got up to 1500 grit on this net. And now we're just gonna jump right into the next step, which is the fun part. The Sapele net is looking really good. I was able to polish up the fish that's in there. It looks great. And now it is sanded to 600 grit throughout and it's time to apply some dallies ship and shore. This stuff penetrates the material 
Gives you a much harder surface, 15 to 25% according to them. And then you can sand between coats. So I'll do probably two penetrating coats of this stuff and it really ends up with a nice finish. So I'm gonna go ahead, get a clean rag, slap this on, throw on some gloves. Let's do it. So here's the super sketchy part. I have actually officially run this stuff all over the place. Just letting it soak in and I don't know what it does to epoxy. So we're gonna find out. This could be bad. So far it looks okay. Time will tell. Oh, and I'll throw in a bonus net look too. Look at this. Koa. Mmm. So the sea fin stuff has soaked in. It's looking really good. I got two coats on this one, sanded between coats. And now it's onto the spar urethane gloss. I'm gonna do about four coats on each. This is the Koa wood figured net that I got. And I'll also show you the sapalic. This is just absolutely gorgeous. So let me show you that. So this looks amazing. The first coat is down, it's hard and it looks really good. Now it's time to sand, which I have 1500 grit here. Usually I do about a thousand grit between coats, but that's just to knock it down, give the next coat something to tack to. And I wipe, of course, the dust off of it and put a new coat of finish on. So I will meet you right here once the final coat of five is done. I love Sapele. The look of this is awesome. The brass looks amazing. Everything's come together beautifully. So now it's time to sew in a net basket. This is a really good silicone net for catch and release. And it has a tighter weave. So when you catch those little pygmy trout like I do, they won't fall through it. That makes me feel better. This little creek net came out exactly as I had hoped and working with Sapele was a ton of fun. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, it means a ton. And if you're thinking about giving net building a shot, I highly recommend it. And share your work with me on Instagram. I would love to see it and share it with the world here. And yeah, send me some pictures and success photos with your nets. Thank you so much for coming along and I will catch you on the next one.